Retired. Here? Retired both ways. Ooh. <laughs> 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 hey, the first, the first thing I see Rob is, is he remember that game he threw? <laughs> I haven't seen him in how many years. No, I, I, it's a pleasure to be here tonight because uh, Glenn and I, uh, this is like a, a homecoming, really. I mean, there's some people here that uh, remember when uh, they were playing and they were skating at the Rec Center. But Glenn and I, we go back 42 years. So we're, we're both timers, that's right. But I can remember Glenn, he was always there for all our staff. Like you say, he was there, just not for Glenn, he was there for the people and kids. I remember all the kids' little schools you ran for our department and everything else. But the biggest thing was he would give up anything, anywhere, anytime for anybody. And I think that's the biggest thing. And Glenn and I, we had an understanding. In fact, one staff party, Christmas party, we really had an understanding. We punched each other up. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they talked us into it, right? <laughs> the next party, said, you okay? Why? Why? Because I punched you. Oh, no, no, I punched you. <laughs> uh, no, Glenn has been a, a, a great, great friend for years and years. And you know, Glenn, this should have been taken to you 10 years ago, not now. It's, I'm just happy for you. I'm really happy for you, and I'm glad I'm here. For you. Great. For the person who's known him the longest, Donnie Desperate. Oh, well, I didn't have anything planned, but I just. <laughs> I was at that Christmas party. <laughs> see guys, anybody's here, well Brian's here, so guys we played with 30 years later playing on the team and we, uh, we used to coach. So that's a testament to Glenn and everybody he's known and all his involvement. So uh, I could go on, I could think of a lot of stories, but uh, it's mixed company. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm really proud of you Glenn and you on your well deserved. I'm getting hungry, I don't know about you. So, if it's really important, yeah, you're going to say something. Ryan, Ryan's a joke. So, having done all that, there's one other person before you speak. Okay. Carrie? Yep. This is a cousin, a real cousin. A real cousin. Not a kissing cousin? These are three guys are listening. <laughs> well, how long ago was it, Larry? Uh, 25 years. When we uh, started right um, to the first, before Red Army, right? Green Timbers? <laughs> Ooh, the Green Timbers League. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. That's from me from pond hockey to ice hockey, I guess, right? And. You know, we just, we just carried on. We just kept going. We, <coughs> L.A., <laughs> missing, missing, missing planes. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Explain that. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to thank you for all your hard work and dedication to all of us for everything. Thank you.
we're going to hear the backbone of the family speak. <laughs> Donna. All right. Probably a lot of you don't know that the way Glenn and I actually met was through one of the local newspapers. He wanted to put an ad in this newspaper, and somebody else says, oh, don't do that, you know. That's not really a very good idea, and especially when he wrote down in the ad that if you're expecting Robert Redford, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, so I actually responded to it. And the first time I talked to him on the phone, he was actually down at the Ladner Rink, and he was taking a friend's son there for hockey. So he was actually, we spent about an hour on the phone while he was there at Ladner with hockey. So the very first, not the first date, thank God, but around the, within the first couple of months, we went to a hockey game, which hockey for me, growing up in Victoria with two brothers that weren't sports-minded, all, <laughs> all I can recall is listening to this jabbering on the TV and thinking, God, that's annoying. Jesus, that's annoying. Why don't they shut up? Anyway, so we go to our first hockey game, and I thought, oh, wow, there's no noise. Like, there's nobody talking. And I couldn't quite equate the fact that I wasn't having to listen to an announcer discuss the whole bloody game on, on the TV. So it was actually almost pleasant. So, and then, of course, I made the mistake, the fatal mistake of calling it a little boys game, which a few of you might recall me making that comment, of which I never late, uh, got that one let down because I had to hear about that for a long time. Because at that point, and we had little kids, and I kept saying, you're just playing a little boys game. But over the years, I've really come to appreciate just what hockey means to Glenn. And now, with my son involved in hockey as he is, I think it's just a great honor that Brian is being coached by his dad. I think that's absolutely fabulous. And um, I know what a hockey family <coughs> means because last year, when Brian played his summer hockey one day, there was an altercation on the ice where somebody was going after, one of the older guys was going after Brian. And being a five foot two and full of piss and vinegar and not taking shit from anybody, I stood up when this guy was going to leave the ice and I blocked him. I wouldn't let this speaker get by me. And I said, what right do you have screwing around with my 15 year old son? You don't have any right. He kept saying, move out of my way. And I just stood there. And guys like this. No, I'm not moving. And so and he then finally... Billy Mitchell showed up. <laughs> <laughs> and, there was a, and all of a sudden, here I am, in the middle, sandwiched between these two hockey guys, and I see one of the goalies come flying Brian. over the ice, crazy Brian, <laughs> comes flying over the ice, and literally, it's like this eagle landing. He just comes down, and then there's ruckus, there's blood, there's, there's <laughs> crap, <laughs> and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, hey, you know, they're standing up for my son, thank God. There's blood all over the metal, the, the <laughs> <edges. There's, laughs> but what really got to me was that after all this was over, Half an hour later, these same idiots are sitting together at a barbecue drinking beer. <laughs> That's hockey. <over. laughs> so, as much as sometimes I haven't understood your desire for hockey, Glenn, I do appreciate it fully. So, thank you. <laughs> it's not a eulogy, Gord. <laughs> Howe and the Big M sitting over there, and we're still at it. <laughs> and 
And I'm, it's been so long since I started this. Young Gordy had long black hair down to his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> we were sitting in the library 40 years ago. 44. 44. <laughs> 44. <laughs> and young Eddie over in the corner. And Bobby, I remember Bobby McCauley when he was eight. <laughs> Goes back so fast this way quickly. But to see you guys here, the kids that mean so much to me, the parents that I just grow very fond of from hockey this year, and Alex and Jordan and Jerry. It was funny as I see Jerry in the park a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know why it's he here. I know I'm going to get an earful because I didn't return the call. <laughs> so I walk in and then I walk in and I go, what the heck, Tony? What's Tony doing here? Thought, and why are we going? I mean, this is just unreal. I never did this ever to have this honor. I do it because I like calling you. That's, that's my thing. I don't do it for anything. Everybody that means so much to me in my life is here right now. It's to do as close as my cousins and my brothers, some of you guys that have known you for years. You always maybe have your differences, but <coughs> sit down after and have a soda. I mean, it's, I can move it back, not even with hockey, but 1974, Heidelberg, Germany. Timmy Bailey and I were throwing beer cans at each other. We're going to kill each other. And then we realized, what's the point? We're 10,000 miles from home. <laughs> and these people looked at us and went, you two are crazy. I'm going, yeah, I got <laughs> You have your moments. But that's the way it is. I, I, thank you so much. And for Jimmy, I've known for a long time. I still get the kick out of the fact that when you were still playing, you were about 85 and one of our goalies was 11. <laughs> And I think they actually got madder when they bumped the kid than they did you. <laughs> and, and, no, it's, it's gone too fast. I appreciate it. I appreciate that Laura's left. We've got a school league team in the, the Surrey School League now, and some players are down there, some of the minor hockey kids are here. And Carrie, yeah, I remember the very first days. I didn't know you could yell like a wolf when you were in a car like that down in L.A. <laughs> you were good. <laughs> yes. A lot of stories. <coughs> you guys. <laughs> Thanks so much. I, 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 I don't know. I, I just thank you. I really don't know what to say.